man, I don't think it gets much more painful than that. A&M just loses on a missed, would-be game-tying field goal after just a great comeback performance. Best the offense has looked in SEC play. The best the O-line has looked for the last two, maybe three years in the second half of this game. Just able to generate a run, make holes for the running back. Amari Daniels looking much better. Stormed all the way back just to miss the field goal at the end in a must-win game for A&M football's aspirations this year. I don't think you'll be seeing Aggies hurt as much as they're hurting right now just because it was so freaking close and this program so badly needed a big win. So much was on the line. You're going to get over the road hump, chance to finish the year strong. Lane Kiffin, there was just so much that was riding on this game and including some more things with, about the program I'll talk about in a second. But you just come up short. You overcame a lot of mistakes this game. You overcame an egregious interception after a beautiful six-minute drive to start the second half. You overcame a slow start. You overcame pretty much a terrible first quarter once again. You took the lead, and then you couldn't stop them, and they scored. This is a Texas A&M team that was missing about three corners. Chappelle, Deuce Harmon, who is emerging and looks really good, and Sam McCall, the young transfer. He's a sophomore. So you're down to DeBerry and Javen Thomas. And number nine, Trey Harris, went off on A&M. Made him look like a superstar, and he made heroic plays in coverage. You're really thin at corner. Judkins, one of the best running backs in the country. Of course, he did his thing. Just finding extra yardage, something we wish our running backs would do, and they did today. But that's your fourth loss of the year. And eight and four was always going to be looked at as a failure this year after five and seven last year. Your one chance at having a bad year. You you're allowed one. But now you're eight and four. You were eight and four the year before. And it's looking bad program is looking bad even though that was such an impressive gutsy performance it's just such a face turn at the end of that game it just the, the whole complexion changes on a missed field goal but you got to give it up for their heart today man you know max johnson he's not perfect he made some bad plays but for him to come back the way he did today after that terrible interception nothing really going in the first half he showed something in that he showed a lot in that. And yeah, he missed a bunch, but he still put us in position to win. This team was in position to win. Offense got it going, then the defense couldn't slow him down. That's just how it goes for Aggie football, it seems. Offense figured things out in the second half. I was calling that half, that, that drive, right before halftime, I believe, where they went around 60, 70 yards for a touchdown before the half. I might be blanking. It might have been the second half, but I think it was first half. And I was thinking to myself, that could be our 2020 Florida game long drive that set the offense straight for the year. Do you guys remember in 2020, lost momentum in the Florida game? Then a just starts running the ball all over them. The offensive line blocked like we hadn't seen them block the last couple of years. And I felt like we were witnessing that kind of turning point in the offense. And it turned out we kind of did. The offense blocked really well. In the second half, A&M drove consistently on this team. And, of course, you drive consistently, you give the ball away in the end zone. That's a huge loss. You waste a lot of time, kill your momentum that you've generated there. You give them the ball. You give them momentum. It's just – it's a 14-point swing. I believe they scored on that drive. But it's really worth more than that. It's worth the game, essentially, when you do something like that in a game that's this close. Le'Veon Moss is a beast. He got hurt this game. We didn't have Evan Stewart this game. Defense, like I said, three corners down. Shamar Stewart got a couple of punches in. He must have known Joe Tessitore was on the call. Got confused, thought he was in a different sport. Threw a couple punches. Their team's pretty chippy too, but Shamar's the one that lost his cool, so he got ejected, which was very unfortunate. But the fight of this offense, Amari Daniels having some really good moments when the blocking improved. Jade Walker having a day. Anaya Smith just... An Aggie legend, even though 
you know, coming up short these few years while he's been here besides 2020. Just a legend because you know it's not his fault. You know he added so much to this team. He's always added so much to this team. That clutch diving catch that got reviewed, overturned, called a catch for Anias to set up the score. It's kind of crazy that A&M leans on quarterback sneaks so much now and so successfully too when they hadn't done it all year before. A&M wasn't terrible in short yard scenarios before in the season. You know, they had the couple of nice play action concepts to get the fullback touchdowns earlier in the year but that quarterback sneak is such an automatic weapon in football these days it works so well better late than never I guess these last five games I guess I guess that's a weapon now proud of the O-line you know I'm sure they hear what we're saying they hear what they're on Twitter they see they see things I'm sure they're searching their names their own names in Twitter I'm sure they know what's said about them and in a sport like this, when you're in a program as high profile as A&M, that's going to happen when you're playing bad. And they came out and they played inspired in the second half, only to come up short. And I can talk it up as much as I want and as much as we can, but that just makes the loss so much more painful because you had it. You were right there. But, of course, just a few mistakes throughout the game lose it for you in what could have been. So we're in 8-4, and four, guys. This is the zone where you don't know what's happening with your coach going forward. You could never, eight and four was always gonna be where the question marks flew. This was always gonna be where it became in play, in my opinion, Jimbo getting fired. And then, you know, the season's not over yet. You win the last two, you win your bowl game, you probably feel good. I mean, it feels terrible right now, but depending on what bowl you get, if you beat LSU to end the year, you're probably feeling good. They can do that if they play it how they play it today, but they're probably not going to do it if they're not going to get healthy at the cornerback room. Probably won't happen. So, guys, I mean, it's a very depressing scene. It's a very, it's awful. This is awful. This is just, this is the worst. Just bad. So, guys, give me your thoughts on the game. I mean, you can take all the positives you want, and I'm taking a bunch from it, but it's your fourth loss on the year, and it just, it adds up. It feels bad. That interception, that one just is in the forefront of my mind. Apparently, Anias ran a bad route, but Max, I think, was super hasty and still threw a bad ball. Too shallow. Maybe he was trying to pull it at the last minute, but it just looked like a, dis a disgusting, poorly executed play. And that one's in the forefront. So, guys, tell me what you're thinking. I have a feeling I know where a lot of you guys are. Probably similar to where I'm at. Feel good about the performance, but it makes the loss even worse. It makes it feel worse. You feel for these kids. You know they wanted it really bad. You know as much as we hurt, they hurt just as bad. I hope you guys realize that. I'm sure there's a few that don't, but I'm sure there's a few fans that don't care either. The majority of these players are feeling how we're feeling. So give me your thoughts, guys. I'll have to rewatch this game tomorrow because that's what I do. Not looking forward to that, but I'll do it. <laughs> and then I'll get with you guys on Monday. We'll talk more about it when it's less fresh and less emotional. Got a big game, last SEC home game next week. Better win it. I still want the team to finish strong. I still want to finish three wins in a row. And I think you show that it's possible, but you gotta get you gotta get Chappelle back. You gotta get Deuce Harmon back. Cause else you can they can sling that thing. But guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here, you Aggies that stuck through to the end of this video. Y'all are the best. So like and subscribe. It's tough, man. It's tough. But win or lose, I love them. I'm going to watch every game. I know you are too. We're going to feel all this pain going forward. Have a good Saturday and Sunday, guys. We'll see you Monday. Gig them.